another week has passed and uh, we've got some new new stories to to discuss so um yeah excited to jump in but uh before we get there how how are you doing yeah good 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 i was just thinking before we started like i, I did a uh, another uh workshop on ai and it's going really well um scores have been 10 out of 10 for almost all of them the last few ones i've done so yeah very very encouraging but um, I believe there's just some news on your end as well. Something is something is dropping. Something is very hot at the moment. <laughs> what, 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 yes, what, yeah. what is that? We we were chatting offline, and um, uh, the the first twelve. Se- I, I'm sorry, I'm going to geek out like seriously here because I'm completely obsessed with the show. But the twelve, the first twelve second promo for Arcane Season Two dropped this morning, and I had all sorts of plans. I was going to be so productive this morning, and this twelve second clip I've probably watched it like a hundred times already, and um, I, it's just completely destroyed my focus. I, I can't believe we have a little five month wait until the show actually is. Uh, uh, yeah, I, I'm super nerd about the show. Um, I, I never even played League of Legends, but the, the show is just mind-numbingly brilliant. Um, everything from the writing to uh, to the animation to the uh, the sound composition and the, the music, it's just, it is absolutely seamless. It's, it's an absolute masterclass. So, yeah, um, I will uh, try and refrain from bringing it up as, um, as the conversation progresses. Um, <laughs> and uh, yeah, speaking of, um, we we are going to be discussing another news story from this week, um, and uh, I'm describing it as the most traumatic event of my life. Um, <laughs> earlier this week, ChatGPT went down, and um, uh, the, the one of the news articles I saw was uh, people forced to use their brains, and um, <laughs> it's <I> love it. yeah. <laughs> Um, but uh, it, it was quite a, a large outage. It was a major outage because um, Anthropic's Claude and Perplexity also experienced significant out- outages at the same time. And obviously, the disruption left many users and businesses scrambling. Um, and it's raised a couple of questions about the reliability and robustness of AI infrastructure. So I don't know what your take is. Um, it, like I say, it was very traumatic for me because while I obviously still use my brain clearly i'm not using it as much as i used to because it was a very traumatic morning for me (laughs) well it's 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 traumatic for a lot of people i mean for me i was in the middle of a a workshop and the the workshop begins with me showing a demo of the voice capabilities of chat gpt just an on it won't work blame the internet for it a few times the it person from the hotel came over I was doing this presentation and he said, Sir, I think that's really fast. It's your laptop. And I'm like, nope, can't be my laptop. I tried to move my phone as well. It can't be my laptop. It is your, your crappy internet. So uh, clearly it wasn't the crappy internet. It was it was chat GPT, which was down. And um, yeah, so was Anthropic, so was Gemini, everything was down. And yeah, at that point I was thinking to myself, you know, I'm so reliant on already. Like this is a, mm. I'm hooked onto it, and I'm not alone in this. There's so many other people who are reliant on chat GPT like tools, LLMs, large language models. If they don't have the tool, what are they going to do? And yeah, it does bring up reliability issues, but these are teething problems. See, yeah, and this is basically most likely the cause was a, you know, too much sort of load on the servers. It's like looking at a, a shop where you have too many people in the shop and the people in the shop who are serving us don't have enough, you know, there are not enough people to serve us. So what do you do? You just queue up, you wait. And it's, I mean, it's similar, you know, you're just waiting to get your turn to be served. And when it's down, it breaks down, it breaks a lot of code as well. Sometimes they don't, they don't have what we call exceptions in the code. And sometimes we just haven't thought about the scenario. And that leads to a whole meltdown of the infrastructure and you have to then perhaps to reboot a lot of things, get them all started up. So it's annoying, but you know, it's happened before with Facebook, Twitter, Google, Gmail, everybody's had it before. And they finally find a way to fix it. And typically these fixes are really good. Yeah, yeah. 
Now, um, what, what is the problem? Because like you say, ChatGPT, Claude, Perplexity, Gemini, they all went down at the same time, but they're all kind of separate entities. Um, so when, when we're speaking about AI infrastructure and that kind of thing, um, are we talking about their connection to the internet? Are we talking about their particular servers and it was just kind of bad luck that they all broke at the same time? Um, what what actually could have caused the um, the meltdown of multiple platforms simultaneously? So that's an interesting thing, and I, I've been looking around to see what is the inside gossip on it, and I haven't got anything which is unique to to to, to what's been reported. There are rumors that it was because of a error, technical error, infrastructure error, infrastructure lack of infrastructure, or just too, too much load on the servers. Again. These are typical reasons why a site goes down anyway. So there's nothing new to report there. But it's interesting that they all went down together. It, it, it could be that they are relying on something particular, which, which had an error, which I can't think of anything apart from maybe NVIDIA GPUs. But again, they should be installed separately. So I don't understand why that's, that was a problem. It's interesting, though, that uh, perplexity went up before chat GPT because actually uses ChatGPT, uh, OpenAI's API, uh, to be precise. And so it was interesting that that mm. went up before um, ChatGPT, which was, which I thought was interesting. I thought it would be other way around. But there are ways to to make yourself a bit, a bit more foolproof, and I'm pretty sure that they will explore this going forward because the reliance on these tools directly, as in users like us using it, as well as businesses which are using using the API calls or indirectly using the, the tools to their programming implies that this is a mission critical kit, bit of kit which we need to mm. preserve and have at all times. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, I was in the middle of uh, researching an article um, that I was busy writing. You obviously were busy presenting uh, something um to a group of people uh and like you know in in your case for example it was look how amazing this tool is and then it's you know <laughs> it's not working um so you know we have become so reliant on these things um what sort of things can we do to maybe mitigate that risk a little bit um i would imagine in your case you know maybe recording a demo and having that as a backup um instead of the live demo would be uh would be um, something that you could p potentially do to mitigate. Um, I thought that, you know, ChatGPT is down. I've got several other options, but they were all down as well. So um, how, how can we look at mitigating these issues? Yeah, great question. And by the way, I have never thought about doing a video for these, because I think the, the, <laughs> the, the, the glamorous thing to do in these presentations is to actually show that and ask them, Questions. I was in, in the Philippines in Cebu, and um, you know, I was doing a presentation presentation for EO Philippines South. And actually, it was really good. Is to turn the the voice headphones icon on and do a a, a voice um, based chat with ChatGPT and say, hey, you know, uh, what's something cool about Cebu, for example? And and that's what I was trying to do, and obviously it didn't work. So I still want to continue doing that, but. Perhaps you think about different approaches to solve this problem. For me, for enterprise level as well as for individuals, the opportunity is to not only rely on these closed source service based companies like OpenAI, Perplexity, um, Claude, et cetera, et cetera, but also maybe have an installation of an open source tool like Llama from Meta. Or, for example, uh, Mistral, which is a French startup. So having them on your own server implies that you control the future, how these are rendered, how these are uh, called when you need them. And it's also in your server. So if you maintain your server really well, you can then take care of how it works, a reliable team, and a reliable infrastructure. This is what was working. Now, it's interesting because most people don't trust their own teams to do that really well. Most people don't want, don't want to do the bloody headache of, of going and, and, and actually uh, 
having this these servers running all the time. So that's why we prefer closed source. Mm-hmm. Recently, ChatGPT sold a massive 100,000 licenses to a corporate, and uh, what was I think it was, it was like Accenture, I think, and you know they also want to want to use a closed source tool because they feel that that's more reliable and they're growing much faster. Mm-hmm. Again, ChatGPT. If you look at the the data analysis, ChatGPT 4.0 is far better than Llama, and it's definitely better than Mistral. So you know you want to use the best tool, and that is ChatGPT. So so that's it's, it's a bit of a problem. The other thing you can do is load balancing. You can have both the options available, and I, I guess this what Perplexity did. They probably have two models there: one ChatGPT and one Llama. So if one goes down, they have a thing called load balancer. And they can, if there's a low load coming towards one, you push traffic towards the other side, which is an open source self-hosted tool. I guess that's why that was working. Yeah, yeah. Now, um, we've spoken about Edge before um, in a couple of episodes. And uh, would this also not be a potential solution uh, if you have uh, these tools loaded on an Edge device? Because you don't necessarily need to be connected to the Internet. Would, would, that, um, would that be, a, like I say, another solution to this issue? Yes, I believe it will be. Or it, or it depends upon how big the problem you're going to solve. A lot of the... A lot of times you require a large language model, which needs a ton of processing power. Typically that's done on the cloud so you can get like server farms to take care of the, the, the actual load to process data. But if it was a small mm-hmm. requirement and you have like small models, which you maybe got from huggingface.com and you put it onto your, to your, your own PC, your own mobile phone, your own tablet, your own Raspberry, then yes, that, that could work as well. But again, just the use case. For most people, they're using large language models to crunch big issues, big challenges. Mm. Yeah. Now, um, I don't know the exact amount of time that it was out. I was down for about three and a half hours. I, I would imagine that it was kind of a phased outage and then it phased um, kind of back online vibe. Um, Three and a half hours, that's a long time in internet time. Um, I mean, that's it's like 50% of your working hours for the day. But in the greater scheme of things, it's really not that, um, it's not that long. And uh, if you are talking about like broken code and, and that kind of thing, um, they, they did a, a fairly good job of getting it back online so quickly. So, um, you know, Three and a half hours is it a long time where do you even start looking for the for the issue um you know if if uh if the systems go down like that well for me three and a half hours is 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 pretty poor um let me explain three and a half minutes is, is a catastrophe in internet time you get tweets coming out from everywhere reddit threads being formed people talking about the reliability three and a half hours is unthinkable Mm. especially amongst the, the geeks who spend their life just doing this and just want to make a mountain, mountain of a mall. So, yeah, this the, is... The, the, the geeks that are waiting to watch the Arcane promo, t- <laughs> promo clip. <laughs> Precisely. The same geeks who are, who are doing that are also doing this as well. As it happens, it is not a long time, but for mission-critical software, it can be. For example, if that tool was linked to a hospital system where, say, in the future, that relies heavily on tools like ChatGPT to make a decision on sources, it could be someone's, it could be life or death situation in the hospital. So we have to be careful because it depends upon how critical the elements involved are. It could be that it's for a hospital. It could be that it's, it's for a transportation system and it needs to be live and active all the time. So what I'll say is that the use cases of this are very serious and they have to do a better job to either internally have load balancing. So that GPT or I have a, mm. a system which kind of comes into play if there's an issue or we as buyers or businesses have two versions. One is a open source tool, 
other one is a is a closed source service like ChatGPT or Anthropic. Yeah. Now, um, to end off, uh, maybe you could just explain how um, these things can be mitigated in in the future. Um, and I, I bring up the the coding side specifically because. Um, you know, in the olden days, and I don't know if this is how it works with AI infrastructure and algorithms, but, um, you know, you write a piece of code, uh, something goes wrong, so you create a patch. And then that also something goes wrong and you create another patch. So you eventually end up with your initial code with like 400 patches on top of it. And um, that's, you know, that's also a catastrophe waiting to happen because you don't quite know what the one patch, patch number 40 is going to, how that's going to affect necessarily patch number 400. So um, how, how, uh, how is the, um, the coding fixed if the coding is broken? And does this link back to kind of the, the actual physical hardware, um, you know, the GPUs and that kind of thing? It's, it's obviously a dual approach. Yeah, the short answer is we don't know. We don't know what exactly happened. We don't know if it's, if it's because of a patch. We don't know if it's because of hardware infrastructure. We have no idea what happened there. This is a this is a closed source software which where there is no re release of. We don't have to tell you what exactly happened, and that's mm -hmm. how it works. But we are just speculating. It could be a software problem. It could be that they moved. Chat.openai.com to chatgpt.com and that caused the problem. It could be that the hardware went down. It could be that GPUs were working. It could be that some some server was down somewhere. Maybe some wrong code was uploaded to the main site. I we have no idea. All we can do is to speculate on what might have happened, and what can be done. I, I believe there will be steps taken by all these tools to do a better more reliable offering and they will fix it up for this. It's like only after you have COVID that people are thinking about vaccinations as a serious requirement, right? Similarly, after a big outage, every CTO is like, okay, this should not happen ever again. A neck yeah. doesn't align, just happens, right? So that will be the case. As I mentioned before, for most people who are doing mission critical, for most companies doing mission critical usage of AI, you've got to have an open source tool built into your system so you have a, a backup option. And that obviously means a lot of cost because now you have to maintain two different systems, one which is ChatGPT like tool, closed source, and one is open source tool. Make sure that both are working equally well and have different scenarios and case planning for them. My feeling is eventually it'll fix itself. For example, Google Maps. Um, that's a critical bit of software used by thousands and thousands of millions of, co of companies across the world. Even like Uber uses it, for example, right through to if you're navigating on a, on the road, for instance, in your own car. So all these things are still managed really well by Google. Infrastructure is reliable, is stable. I, I believe it can be achieved pretty easily by OpenAI as well. They have Microsoft behind them and they know what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. Cool. That's um, all we have time for in this episode. Um, and uh, probably the last note from me is, dear Open AI, please don't give me another traumatic experience. Um, and I'm speaking on behalf of the entire world. Um, so, yeah, thanks to the listeners for joining us as always. Uh, don't forget to, to subscribe if you haven't already. And, of course, join the conversation by leaving a comment or popping us a DM. We'd love to hear from you. And until next one, uh, until the next episode, thanks, Raj. Thank you very much.